And this, I think, means that it leads us into when we're taking direct action or, or making demands of climate change into some potentially problematic areas. Um, Gary's already mentioned that doing action on large emitters like power stations or, or big companies isn't enough. Um, but it also means that we are sometimes pushed into these sort of strange um, positions of almost arguing for some form of green austerity. Uh, an example is uh, one of the climate camp gatherings a couple of years ago, uh, one of the speakers um, said that we need to be ready to put down riots against austerity, or something which I fundamentally disagree with. So this idea that we are almost taking direct action in this mixed way of not saying that um, governments are the ones that can change the world, but also kind of trying to back up what governments are saying. Um, I think what this comes down to is a kind of tension within the grassroots end of um, the climate change campaigning, which um, wants to be anti-capitalist or identifies as anti-capitalist, but almost has a sort of schizophrenic split between definitely taking on social issues and capitalism, but at the same time thinking um, climate change is so important and so urgent that it, we can almost push the rest of um, the issues to do with capitalism to, the, to, to one side. Um, now, because crisis is, is both an opportunity, um, it means that effectively the, the climate crisis and the um, experience of this COP could mean that we end up seeing some form of new green capitalism or a capitalism 2.0. Um, but also I feel that um, some of the movements struggling around climate change could almost unwittingly aid the restructuring of capitalism into this capitalism 2.0 by kind of bolstering it, even the people who say they're not there to bolster and support governments, but they could end up feeding any opportunity for business nationally and internationally. So it's definitely a, uh, an opportunity for people, certain people, to make quite a lot of money. Um, it's also an opportunity to back up uh, capitalism's kind of image crisis um, at the time of um, financial crisis and a crisis at home in the UK, but it's an opportunity to spin some narrative of attempting to do something that's going to improve the world. But it's also, I, I would argue, an opportunity for us, for us to remake the world in a fundamentally different way, and not just to use the um, kind of totalising problem of urgency to act on climate change as a way of shutting down all other forms of politics. I don't see any fundamental contradiction between taking urgent action um, on the kind of crisis and simultaneously taking equally urgent action on transforming the world to a society not based on um, a capitalist mode of production, constant accumulation, which ultimately is at the root of um, these crises anyway. Um, and I think at the COP, um, here you can see the sort of um, manifestation of a sort of form of Copenhagen from above and Copenhagen from below. I don't think it's split as easy as that. There are obviously people inside the <coughs> summit that re represent uh, the above and um, there are going to be people on the streets that you can see representing the below. But I think within that there's a kind of tension within movements, within groups and within individuals as well over, um, over how they articulate a radical critique of the system within an environmental politics that sees that we need to take um, action as urgently as possible. Um, and I think you can also see this, um, this above and below as a form of um, value struggle between the values of those that um, valorise constant profit and um, seeing this as an opportunity to continue the system that's got us here and the values of others of us that see that the world should be based on a fundamentally different value system. Um, and that this leads to a kind of a value struggle and I think that's what we, that's what we need and that's what we can see sort of occurring um, a, a struggle over a different way of life which for me would be um, if we see the, the COP as part of a, a restructuring process as some kind of move maybe towards some kind of more socially just or more green capitalism that that ultimately is going to be based on some new round of accumulation and new round of enclosure a new round of enclosure of things that previously potentially we've held in common or haven't been part of private property. And I think as a kind of counter to that, um, in, instead of maybe arguing against the very neoliberal free market idea of capitalism towards some more um, 
socially just, socially democratic capitalism that owns these things in the public sphere. We should get rid of the public private and um, start to think about how actually the world is part of our commonwealth and that we need to extend these commons and struggle over these commons and produce new ones as part of our, our value struggles and for a new way of life and to um, fundamentally challenge the way we live now as part of fighting the climate crisis and be very careful about how much we reinforce the kind of dominant narrative of how they would like to um, re-administer the world and put some of their full solutions forward.